podcast for all life and love forms of Arcadia Bay and beyond. I am your host Martin, as known as It's Me Maxine. This episode is my longest so far, and I would talk with Eshalat about her written fanfics and all kind of Life is Strange stuff. She was the reason I got into fanfics and discovered the Life is Strange fans Discord server in the first place. More about my story in episode 1. Kudos again to Riley Hawk for letting me use her Life is Strange inspired music for the podcast and Olya Rue for the original podcast cover. But now to the interview with Eshi. Okay, this time I have the wonderful Eshi with me. Um, she is a writer of a lot of fan fictions and I talked to her today um, about uh, her Life is Strange experience and some other stuff. So welcome Eshi to the podcast and please introduce yourself. Well, hello, and it's it's great to be here. Uh, as mentioned, I go by Eshi, uh, although on some platforms I I also go by uh, Escherlat. Mm -hmm. uh, and been in the uh, Life is Strange community for uh, about three three years now, I believe. Uh, resident in the United States, I've been to most of the uh, continental states, the contiguous states, and uh, I've also traveled to a number of other wonderful countries. I do uh, computer programming. I've been doing that for a few years. Mm -hmm. I've also had a, a wide variety of jobs over the years. A groundskeeper at a, at a private zoo, a lot of, a lot of things in the construction trades. I've done retail work, run my own businesses. Uh, Right now, I'm just doing computer programming for for a company, a software company, not in not in game development or or game design. <laughs> and I I love the outdoors. I love to go outside and and walk, especially when it's not humid. Where I live, it tends to be very humid. Okay. Of course, I play video games. I like to hang out with friends. I love animals, and obviously, I I love to write. It's always been a a passion of mine since I was I was very little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I also like to walk, but uh, <laughs> here it's not so humid, so uh, it's mm -hmm. much more <laughs> easier here, I think, for me. Yeah, here it's usually we're in summertime, so it's usually in the the thirties uh, Celsius with around a hundred percent humidity. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you go walking very late at night or very early in the morning. Uh, okay, nothing for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I start with some questions, of course, of Life is Strange. Mm -hmm. How and when you got into the video game franchise Life is Strange? Sure. So, the my first encounter with Life is Strange was not long after, I believe, Episode 5 came out. I, I purchased the, the entire game. Uh, in, in a sale, I, I watched the trailer. I found it different from most games that I've I've played till then. Mm -hmm. Installed the game, played a few minutes, but at that time it didn't really like connect with me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until a, a few years later that I so this, that would be what 2018, I believe, when I decided to give it a, an, another go. Mm -hmm. And that's when the game really started uh, clicking for me. Yeah, cool. Just kind of fell in love with the game uh, partway through episode one and just kept, played the whole thing in, in like two or three days after work. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. The first time I played, I... I made it as far as the, the parking lot in, in episode one before Chloe uh, came on the scene. So I, I kind of left uh, I kind of left Max in the parking lot for two or three years before I came back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Max. <laughs> Hopefully she was not with Warren there. Okay, no. It was before you talked to Warren. <laughs> okay. Just joking. Mm-hmm. Just to mention it, 
there was something clicking with you. What was so special for for you about it? Sure. So I when I gave it another go, you know, I finished the parking lot scene. Uh, Chloe rescues Max. They ride off in in Chloe's truck, and it was that conversation that they had in the truck that mm -hmm. really that's when it began to draw me in. It, it really resonated with some events uh, I'd had in, in my life mm -hmm. uh, right around the time of, of uh, Max and, and Chloe's age in the game where uh, I had moved away from my, uh, my friends in, mm -hmm. in, around that same age. Mm -hmm. And I remember going back sometime later and just that, that feeling of you're home, but you're not home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then when we got to when you get to Chloe's house and you start walking around, that just it it was like reliving that part of of my my teen years. It was very different. So I'd never experienced that in a game before. Uh, and at that point, I I couldn't put it down. I just played until I made myself you know stop playing so I could sleep, go to work, come home. <laughs> First thing I did was sit down and start playing again. I needed more time. I have only, I, I think, I needed weeks, I think. Mm. But, but it was different for me because I had, I think, one hour a day with the kids. And then mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I need special, uh, yeah, I think, very quiet. No one yeah. is disturbing me and so on. So this is only in, uh, that at that time was only special uh, for, for one hour a day or so. And, and I'm not a gamer, I have to admit, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I hear you on that. Uh, when I when I gave it that second go, uh, mm -hmm. uh, my because because I also have uh, family uh, kids and uh, and they were actually gone for that week that I played the game. Ah, okay. So I <laughs> I uh, was able to play it uh, undisturbed. <laughs> Yeah, that explained a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're at grandparents. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, cool. You said that that it reminds you that maybe of of uh, some of your childhood or, or what you experienced in an adult uh, coming adulthood. Mm -hmm. So was there, yeah, as some say it's a special aha moment or life changing moment. I, I don't want it to phrase it that way, but was there something that really stuck out? There are lots of things about the game that really stood out and continue to stand out to me. Uh, Max, Chloe, and Kate as characters in the game uh, speak to me in, in many ways. Uh, mm. I, I would describe my my personality, my background, to be very similar to Max, mm -hmm. but with also a lot of similarities with with Kate, uh, a very like strict uh, religious uh, upbringing, mm -hmm. but I've also got a bit of a punk streak, if you will, like Chloe. <laughs> um, so the those three really really resonated with me, and it was the connection, the connection that uh, Chloe and and Max had have in the game, and uh, I won't go into the details why however at the end of the game uh, for there's just too many reasons to go into i ended up saving the bay instead of saving chloe mm -hmm. and it felt hollow it was mm. not the the ending, of course, was beautiful, very well done from like a technical perspective, mm -hmm. but it was to me it it was meaningless that choice, uh, and it so disturbed me that I went back and and saved Chloe, which felt better, but was still still kind of lacked something. <laughs> but that really made me start really examining. Uh, examining myself and and my life and many other things just give me a lot to think about hmm. 
the ending is of course highly discussed hotly debated <laughs> topic yeah. i think everywhere along with the relationships but yeah <laughs> mm. I think that what what most people or what what me hit mostly was the scene with Kate. I think I was very lucky. I have to admit that I that, that I saved her. That was pure luck. And I thought I heard that a lot of people I think switched off consoles in mid play, and I don't know. And and it's uh, it's yeah. yeah. There there are a lot of a lot of stuff that that hit you hard. Yeah, Kate. The the scene of Kate on the rooftop also very special to me and there there are lots of moments in the game prior to that that were just told me this is not like any other game i've played mm. i've played probably hundreds if not thousands of video games before playing life is strange and this this a lot of things in in the first couple episodes just told me this is not like any other game i've played and then of course the rooftop scene like this is definitely not like any game i've ever played and it, like you i uh, i got a bit lucky that first time around and and saved her and mm -hmm. it's just a lot of powerful moments in in that game completely i did not expect such such emotion and such uh depth uh in in a video game mm -hmm. yeah Correct. Yeah, cool. I think a lot of people get onto the fandom, of course, um, and and community after a while. So, uh, how and when did you get into the fandom? Oh, that's that's a good question. <laughs> not soon, not long after I I completed the first game. Mm -hmm. I played before the storm because i just wanted to see more of the people their lives more of that that depth and emotion and there that helped a little uh farewell of course did not help at all but uh <laughs> there it helped a little playing those but it wasn't i needed to talk to to other people who had played the game who'd had similar experiences and people like that that's that's mm -hmm. that's not my friends or or any of my mm -hmm. the the social life i had at that time so i begin looking around and i've never though i've played many video games prior i never got involved in any of the communities or fan activities uh, around video games i I enjoyed video games. I played them, but that that was the extent. And for Life is Strange, it changed all that. I, I believe it was August. I I played the games in May and June, and then in August, I discovered the Life is Strange fans Discord and joined that, mm -hmm. and just started uh, chatting with people on the server. Uh, joined a few others, but was mostly active on Life is Strange fans. Uh, also got involved in reading fanfic, which I'd never done before, not for any particular reason, just just never thought to read fan fiction. I started reading it because I needed I needed more. I needed to see their story not just for Max and Chloe, but for others, see their story outside of the game, beyond the game, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, for me it was the same, because I never read fan fiction before, and uh, yeah, I think it was, was uh, through your, I think it was your links, I'm not sure, from the Discord server, I don't know. But uh, I think you was the uh, one um, <laughs> that uh, brought me to mm -hmm. fan fiction. I think maybe it was a was a link on the uh, Life is Strange fans Discord server, and you posted there, and uh, it was the first fan fiction mm -hmm. I read. <laughs> but we come yeah. to this later. So, what do you like most about the fandom and the the? Um, maybe on, on the Life is Strange Discord server, or maybe also at, on uh, AO3 or on, on, on when writing fanfics? 
Oh, what do I like the most? That's it's hard to say what I like the most. Uh, there's definitely a lot of things I, I like about the the fandom. It's lots of great people, a lot of diversity, different backgrounds, different. Just I've met so many wonderful people uh, through the Life is Strange fans Discord, through Twitter, through Reddit, mm -hmm. and other places that really helped me continue to to build on what I was doing or what I'd start what the game had started with me, which was really examining myself and my life and what I valued and what I thought was important and uh, just getting to know uh, a lot of these people being able to to listen and learn how to listen uh, and to participate in like story creating stories, just bouncing ideas. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just you know chatting and and hanging out, it can be pretty <laughs> chill. Um, and of course, discussing life is strange, uh, all of the games, and uh, it's really hard to say that there's one thing I like the most. But it, I guess collectively, it would be the people, the people I've met and been able to mm -hmm. to learn more about and and. Uh, a lot of the friends I've made, yeah. I think it's true for for a lot of people. I think. Um, what kind of fandom input you like the most, and why? So, is it more? Um, of course, maybe fanfics, but maybe there are other things you like also, like drawing, cosplay, and there's a variety yeah, of things. Oh, so I I enjoy pictures, uh, whether they're. Uh, you know, pen and paper type pictures or digital photos of cosplay are awesome. I, I just love seeing people uh, express themselves and and bring different parts of the the, the of the uh, Life is Strange characters to life. Fanfics, I mm -hmm. both write and read them. Sometimes I watch videos. I'm I'm not really much of a a video person, but I'm I'm more of a a reader. Mm -hmm. I like the, I, I especially like pictures because they often spark uh, ideas for me, uh, which sometimes uh, becomes a story. I think you, um, I'm not sure if, if you mentioned it already, but I think, I'm not sure if I'm right, but you are an admin on the Life is Strange fans Discord server, right? I'm one of the moderators, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, moderator, yeah, correct. So how did you get involved there with the Life is Strange fans Discord server team? That's a good question. I was, I was, try, I was trying to recall it because it's been uh, at least two years, uh, and a lot has happened in the last two or three years. Uh, so I said I, I was uh, pretty active uh, on the server. Mm -hmm. I've, I was on Discord before Life is Strange, uh, usually for technical communities. And it's one thing that I, I've always observed about uh, these communities is that their their like their membership or popularity they they kind of ebb and flow. So that's on on the Life is Strange fans server goes through these cycles of lots of people talking and then you know just a few people chatting. And um, I've been pretty constant in there. Uh, for several months, sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, helping, listening, learning how to listen. Uh, and then one day, it's like maybe eight months after I joined, I can't remember, uh, one of the admins reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to be, would you like to be uh, a moderator on the server? So we chatted and I thought about it and I accepted. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it was just, being active uh, and, and not simply like throwing words on the server, but like, listening and and being part of the uh, of, of the community on the server is one of the things that led to me being invited to join the mod team. Are you involved in any other activity of of the website or anything? Uh... From the team or just the discord server i'm just asking because <laughs> everyone i think is uh, is waiting for the new uh, website start 
and I'm not sure if you can tell anything about it. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> We're all eagerly awaiting its uh, its re its launch. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's gonna be great. We'll see. Of course. So we will touch on the subject of fanfics. Um, where, of course, a lot of fans express themselves. And, of course, you are famous for that. And how you got into writing fanfics, then? So, joining the community, discussing on, whether it's on Discord or Twitter, that helped. Uh, likewise, reading fanfic, fanfiction helped. But it wasn't completely satisfying. There were too many thoughts, too many ideas, too much life bouncing around in my head and it just wanted to come out. And I just one day I, I opened uh, I opened a, a notepad app and I just started typing. <laughs> that that draft will never see the light of day. <laughs> because <laughs> it was all over the place uh, in terms of quality. It wasn't really a story. It was just me letting all that life, all that emotion flow through me into, <laughs> into the words on the screen. Mm. I do go back to that draft and, and take ideas from it to, to use in, in, in other stories, but uh, that kind of rambling flow helped uh, but it when I, it was when i was reading uh, better then that i realized a story i wanted to tell uh, there are lots of things i liked about better then uh, lots of also things i uh, that didn't sit right i think is the wrong phrase but just things that i didn't agree with hmm one of those things being how, uh, within a very short time period, uh, Max and Chloe had basically turned into action heroes. Mm -hmm. That gave me the idea that uh, turned into the the story known as Shards. Mm -hmm. I worked on that, but I never. I, I actually wrote the whole story. I was also kind of inspired by someone else that was on the Life is Strange fans server at the time. He mm -hmm. was getting involved in a an activity known as NaNoWriMo, which is every November it's it's this activity where people try to write a 50,000 word novel in the, the whole month of November. Uh, and, and he and I had been chatting about writing and, and fiction and whatnot uh, uh, on, the, on the Discord server. And uh, so I joined the, the NaNoWriMo uh, activity and uh, started writing shards. I wrote all of shards in that month. Mm-hmm. But I never thought of, of publishing it, so it just sat on my my computer for a while. When did you start? November of twenty twenty eighteen, if I have the year correct. I think it I think it is twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. I think we come to some projects of uh, use uh, later, um, but. Of course, there's the project I know of that is Redemption. I think that is currently ongoing. And uh, what is your yeah? What is uh, your current? What are your current projects? Uh, current projects. So, uh, Redemption <laughs> is is massive, uh, and I'm, mm -hmm. it is nearing its completion. There's a few chapters left. There's also one or two shorter fictions uh, I have on, or shorter stories I have on AO3 that I need to complete. But I also have like 12 or more 
projects writing or stories on the side that are in various states. I, I, the longest one is probably I have <laughs> I've been writing a, an alternate universe where uh, Chloe is a witch hunter. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got several chapters of that written and Right now, I'm thinking that's going to be the the next project that I publish. The next story I publish is that one. That one's a, a lot of fun and a bit different. No time travel. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds fun. Now, okay, I'm <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> is there some favorite piece of yours, or um, if not? Yeah, that stuck out the most. Or you have a funny story about a, a special story of yours? So are these are you asking about like my my own works or or others? Uh, no, your own works. Okay. Um, a lot of my stories draw from uh, events and experiences uh, in my own life. There is a whole lot of that in uh, Make Your Own Choice and Redemption. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the scenes in those stories draw from, like I said, are, are inspired by by things I've uh, experienced or been part of. Mm -hmm. Make Your Own Choice was the third story I wrote, and it came from a question someone asked when... Uh, uh, when we were chatting, some of us were chatting about uh, story ideas on the Life of Strange Fans server. Uh, someone mm -hmm. asked, I can't remember the exact question, because this is three years ago, but it was it was something like, what if uh, instead of sacrificing either Chloe or Arcadia Bay, mm -hmm. Max found a way to save both Mm -hmm. But the consequence is to do that, Max had to completely remove herself from Chloe's life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the statement that uh, I captured. And uh, over the next few days and weeks, I just started recording a few ideas uh, about what that might mean. Uh, and at the time, I was very much writing shards. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I was done writing shards, I, I switched over to uh, make your own choice and begin writing that. But uh, that's that's how that probably my my most well known work got got uh, started. Uh, as far as like maybe something that's funny, there's a short story I I wrote called A Fair at the Fair. Mm -hmm. That was inspired. I was uh, on a on a different Discord server. I was chatting. I think it's Discord. Yeah, I was chatting with a, a few people on on another Discord server. And one person I was in in the conversation was, was based in Europe and mentioned that they found it strange that in in the United States at like county and state fairs, there's all this fried food and, and all sorts of different food and they just mm -hmm. thought it was we, we talked about the different kinds of foods like like breaded cheeseburgers and deep fried twinkies and they were very <laughs> dubious that people actually made those things let alone ate them uh and just in the course of the conversation i got an idea to write about uh max and chloe uh, being like 12 or 13 going to the fair and chloe eating too much of that <laughs> Horrible fair food. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So I, I wrote it in a in a single setting and and, and published it, and they're like, "That that's a lot of uh, weird food you have in your fairs." <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Speaking of um, maybe other. Um... Fanfics or other other uh, genres? Um, are there other genres, fandoms, or ships uh, that you prefer or that you like? Oh, I thinking about ships. Um, Pricefield 
Marshfield, Price March, Chase March, whether they're uh, romantic, uh, non-romantic, or a mixture thereof, I'm, there, there's a lot of depth to to Max, Kate, Chloe, Victoria. Mm-hmm. That just for fun to 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 explore and, and read about, mm-hmm. like genres. Uh, I'm pretty wide open, so I, I've always tended towards sci-fi fantasy types. Um, mm-hmm. But I thinking about a fanfic, I'm, I'm not strictly has to be canonical or or has to be completely around the game setting. Mm-hmm. I've read a, a number of of LIS fanfics that have only the characters and nothing else to do about the game and and they're they're still wonderful and great because the characters are still themselves. Mhm. I I think what I'd say there is I really like the the different stories, videos and other things uh, about those characters as long as those characters are still themselves. Mhm. So are there any limitations? Or no goals for you in writing fanfics? I am not. I, I won't read uh, a story that involves like shipping an abuser with uh, their victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I won't read stories that in in uh, that include. Uh, non-consensual sex, so rape. Sure. Mm-hmm. So those are, those are uh, two of the things I, I look for in in tags before I dive into a story. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing for it to the the topic to be mentioned, but it's uh, another thing when that is like one of those is like the uh, like a major part of the story. Mm-hmm. Also, this is just a kind of a personal pet peeve. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really uh, fond of a, a story that takes Kate uh, as she is in the game, uh, and within like a day or two, has her in a like a, a a full relationship with uh, any of the the women in the game and, and that's purely because of the the religious background uh i i have I, I can definitely see kate going in that direction but it's not something after a day or two there's it's a journey uh and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we don't see enough about kate in the game to know where she's at in that in that journey it seems like she's if she shows an, an interest, a romantic or sexual interest in, in say, uh, Victoria, that uh, mm-hmm. there's still things that she has to to work through uh, and, and overcome uh, before she can even admit it to herself. So stories where within a, a day or two, she's immediately in bed with Victoria just kind of immediately turn, turns me off. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem realistic to me. Mm. I want to talk about some some of your special uh, pieces, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, it's about uh, <laughs> make your own choice. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, then how long did it take to create um, uh, make your own choice for you? I began writing make your own choice December of 2018 uh and i was done i'm gonna say around june of 2019 mm-hmm. uh, so somewhere around seven months mm-hmm. i i my style of writing is goes by by a few different names uh, one name it goes by is pants writing which comes from the expression uh, by the seat of your pants, because I don't use a plot or uh, excuse me, I don't use a, an outline. Mm-hmm. I, my character or excuse me, my, my stories are written as the characters discover them. It's really 
my stories are very character driven. Mm-hmm. So I may, I may, I, I'll create a starting point. Like, what is that mm-hmm. opening scene? What is the situation? And I know how a story will end. Mm-hmm. And I may know two or three things that happen along the way, but I, that's the extent of my outlining or planning for a story. Mm-hmm. Once I have those those few things, I, I start writing. And the stories tend to change a lot by the time they reach the end because I'm... As I'm writing the characters, I'm I'm like I'm in their their mind, I'm in their head, uh, and seeing things the way they see them, uh, and that can result in changes that I I never uh, anticipated, which can sometimes completely derail my story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, it's. Uh, so MYOC, like I said, took around seven months. Uh, and again, when I started with it, just like with Shards, I never thought about publishing it. I'd actually worked on it for two or three months mm-hmm. before someone encouraged me to uh, to to publish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I found uh, fascinating is um, uh, what you said is that you did uh, your stories are character driven, or that you. Um, make it on the way um, because and I remember in the comments um, you always you sometimes write um, yeah I, I, maybe we can see where the story goes or where the next chapter goes and so on and I thought yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's only only <laughs> to 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 make it but yeah but okay now it makes sense because uh, and and I think it's uh, maybe it's a special kind of of uh, writing a story but it works uh, for me as of it's it's um absolutely cool for me so um and i think it's it's okay because the the characters are evolving and changing and mm-hmm. so the story may may change also with this uh, evolving part so uh, that's that's really cool yeah i usually have three or four chapters in a draft stage mm-hmm. when i when i publish a chapter so I'll publish one. I'll still have three or four in draft, because uh, if because my stories can change sometimes drastically by choices, by things that a, a character does, I don't want to. I don't want to be in a situation where the story <laughs> the story has really changed, and now things in published chapters need corrected. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I give myself a buffer of two, of three or four chapters in, in, in draft. That way, if I do need to make a change, I only need to change the, the unpublished chapters. Mm-hmm. Nice insight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I think you already said or... Uh, uh, um, why you wrote uh, Make Your Own Choice or where you are inspired. Is there anything you you want to add to this uh, to make your own choice uh, for some of the maybe things you wrote there? Or sure, there's some more things I could share with. Mm-hmm. So with, I mentioned earlier, I said earlier that uh, these that the stories also draw from my own experiences and and my life uh, and. Both make your own choice and redemption are also giving glimpses into my journey Mm -hmm. and my better understanding of myself and and the world around me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a bit tumultuous and you can likely see that in those stories. Mm -hmm. But uh, both of those stories are, are kind of dear to me because it, it's also given me, these stories have also given me uh, uh, a, a way to really explore different concepts and values and, and to question a, a lot of my, my life and beliefs and, and the, the world around me and to figure out what I believe, what I want, and, and where I want to be. Mm. 
just a lot of personal elements in those stories. Mm. I, I've only written uh, one uh, fanfic, <laughs> so I, I can imagine that. Um, yeah, I put also a lot of uh, personal stuff in the story. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, maybe that it's it's may not normal, but I think maybe a lot of people or writers uh, do that in their fan fictions. Yeah, a lot of there's a, a few uh, writing communities that uh, I participate in, and especially with fanfic, it's common for stories to be a, a, an outlet. Mm -hmm. So I have to admit that a redemption for me, I think I told it on you already, uh, was for mm -hmm. me, it was a little bit, yeah, I don't know how to phrase it. Daunting. I have to also, um, yeah, um, also um, deal with some anxiety issues. So, and mm -hmm. uh, I made a, uh, I had a therapy there, uh, there, I think also yeah, three years ago. Uh, exactly when I started Life is Strange, playing Life is Strange, which was coincidental, but uh, all the, at the same time. And uh, sometimes it hits me too hard and um, mm -hmm. I will see how how I may um, finish the story. But um, it's great, but sometimes I'm not uh, in the right mood or I don't know what to phrase it. Then I hear you. The, the story overwhelms me, so... <laughs> yeah. I hear you. There are uh, fanfics, many fanfics I've begun reading, uh, and I can see where the story or our character arc is, is going. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I can't bring myself to read any further because I just have this feeling of what's going to happen next, and I'm not ready to... I'm not ready to to face that. I'm not ready to, to read it, to hear about it, to experience it. Mm. And so there's there's a lot of a lot of fanfics that I've begun reading and I reached that point and, and I set it aside and I, I haven't finished reading them because of that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah that's <laughs> so it's it's nothing special about you, but yeah, as you said, so sometimes it's you you uh it's uh yeah some stories are just too too much sometimes i, I think mm -hmm. also maybe i um feel too much or compare too much to max or to to the the main character and you feel that you may i don't know how to phrase it that you experience it yourself or mm -hmm. that you may re re um feel or re, re relive this this part of your life and this is maybe then 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 too much yeah that's a great way to put to to say it mm. concerning feedback and input from the community um how's in the feedback to your fanfics the feedback is has been positive mm -hmm. Uh, I've only had, to, to my knowledge, I've only had uh, one negative comment left on one of my my stories, uh, and it, it was I don't know why the person did it, but they they wrote the negative comment in another language. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I tend to put my my stories uh, in in a mode where comments need moderation before they show up. So I just never approve that comment, but. Mm -hmm. Most of my feedback comes from various Discord servers and in my in my beta readers, and there there's times where they point out, "Hey, this is not what you think it is," or "This this is actually like this might be a, a problem." Mm -hmm. They they've helped me like to improve my my tagging and content warning of of, of stories. Uh, for the like I said, for the most part, it's it's, it's the feedback is is positive, uh, and uh, often, especially on the Discord server, is often a, a source for for new ideas. Mm -hmm. So, is there any specific uh, things you do when creating fanfics or gathering new ideas? 
Uh, I have a, a document that I, I, I record. I call it my backlog. I, I record new story ideas in it. Uh, so when mm-hmm. when one comes to mind, maybe it's from a picture or a conversation, I, I open that document and I just create a new paragraph and put my, my thoughts and ideas uh, into that. And you know, sometimes my mind keeps thinking about uh, a particular idea. Or, or maybe I'll, I'll read a, a fanfic or, or a comment, a comment, and uh, it brings, to, makes me uh, think of, of one of the, the uh, stories of my backlog, and maybe I'll add a little bit more details to it. And sometimes I'll reach a, a writing block with one of my stories, like like with Redemption, uh, where I need to take a break from from writing it, and. Uh, that's usually when I'll look into my my backlog and I'll pull one of those out and and start writing it <laughs> uh, and set it aside and go back to my my main story and I just kind of do that 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 story swapping uh, uh, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if you've done it already, but um, are you doing collaborations with other artists? I help out with beta reading, uh, and then there's a Discord channel or Discord server I'm in that is mostly about Life is Strange fan fiction. It, it's it's all the members are authors, mm-hmm. uh, and there's a lot of ideas that get shared there, um, feedback, and sometimes. Sometimes an author will post a a fragment of a a chapter or a scene, and will be able to give not just "Hey, this is great" or or that kind of feedback, but also to help like flesh out the different ideas. Uh, and we kind of help in, inspire each other uh, and, and help each other to you know, keep on keep on writing and sharing. But I've not really like writing a story together with someone else. I've not really done that. Mm-hmm. Mostly at the the idea uh, and beta feedback mm-hmm. aspect that I that I've worked with with other authors. Mm-hmm. So you you mentioned it already. Um, this is uh, yeah, like you said it. There's a writers community or. Mm-hmm. And so you already said that the uh, I think you inspire each, each other or help beta reading. So that's that uh, sounds really really cool. And I think um, is it helpful for you? So oh, it's 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 very helpful because mm-hmm. I especially when I'm writing about. Uh, a person of an event or or anything else that I'm not really familiar with. Mm-hmm. You know, as an author, I authors do lots of research, even for like fantasy and sci-fi stories. We're we're always researching things so that we can make our stories better and and seem more more real. Even with all that that research, though, being able to put an idea in front of someone else and say, hey, is this how this would be? Or is this how this kind of, this character would would respond? Is this how it should be worded? Uh, being able to get feedback from people that that have those different experiences uh, and sometimes uh, expertise is is really helpful in making, making our stories better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Switching to <laughs> maybe a little um to a critical mm-hmm. um eye on uh, t- to throw it on life is strange um i think i think it's okay to to look um a little bit on a different angle or different view for life is strange um mm-hmm. so what topics are missing or could have been developed more you think with the existing games, mm-hmm. 
there, there's lots a lot has been said by the community over the years of, of what could be mm-hmm. what could be improved what could have been done better like making some of the the slaying a little more uh appropriate for the time that's mm-hmm. that's one thing that gets raised a lot uh, as just as one example mm-hmm. uh, but as far as topics i really enjoyed the some of the the topics in the the first game like the relationship between max and chloe mm-hmm. in, in my opinion it was still still a little too vague a little too open to interpretation mm-hmm. uh, so uh, just a little bit more uh, and a few more nudges here or there to remove mm-hmm. the am- remove some of that amb- ambiguity mm-hmm. would have been uh, an improvement uh, thinking about life is strange too one of the things that really mm-hmm. i really look forward to with with life is strange too is the fact that uh, the the main characters uh, were Latino, mm-hmm. uh, and just that that opportunity to play as as characters that are not frequently the the main characters of of, of a video game was something I really looked forward to. As some of that Latino, the the U.S. especially Latino culture is is in my background, uh, so that was also a, a motivator for me to to see it in the game and mm. uh some of it was definitely there the 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 way the uh, sean and daniel the relationship they had with their father that was that was great it just seemed like there were gaps uh in in the culture uh, as shown in the game mm. that could have been developed a bit more like this like the music they would have listened to Mm -hmm. and especially with the first two games there were parts of them that seemed rushed Mm -hmm. definitely in in my opinion that's when one of the big uh kind of glaring problems with before the storm is it seemed rushed uh and Mm. especially the third episode it seemed like to put it this way it's, it's like oops we ran out of money yeah. we better uh <laughs> we better uh bring this to an end <laughs> yeah right so just a little more time a little more funding maybe mm. and i'm really uh happy to see true colors coming out uh because i want to see more games where the the developers dive into some of these topics that mm-hmm. they may show up in other video games, but they tend to be there for show or to ch- to tick a box. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the life of Life is Strange series, they see they're the central topics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I also liked uh, Life is Strange too. I think a lot of people doesn't like it for different reasons but as you said because they're they are latinx people though so that yeah so that's yeah. totally different for, for me as a, as a white person i have to admit mm-hmm. so it's it's absolutely needed and uh, that we yeah. have different different uh, yeah opinions different views different settings and different uh, yeah experiences um, yeah, and Life is Strange True Colors, correct? And this, uh, I'm also f- looking forward for this. So we have, yeah, an Asian American, I think, uh, women mm-hmm. of color there. So yeah, I hope that this will be maybe covered, but um, I'm not sure if it will be covered. That, uh, but we will see. Uh, nobody knows exactly what is coming, but yes, I really like the fact that they present these these topics in small town settings mm-hmm. because that's where the the problems are more visible mm. versus the large metropolitan settings yeah 
do you think? Um, <laughs> I asked the question also. I remember Nicefield's answer to that. Um, are there any taboos or red lines in the fandom? I don't mean that sacrifice, sacrificing Chloe, but <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you think there are any taboos there or is the community really, really open? That's kind of a difficult question for me to answer uh, because if you think about the fandom as a whole, mm -hmm. there are people that will do things like create underage sex scenes, mm -hmm. detailed ones, or mm. shipping, like I said earlier, shipping the, the abuser with their victim. So like uh, a relationship, a romantic sexual relationship between Jefferson and, and Max, which mm. uh, so in the, the broad, community i there are lines that should not be crossed but they they are crossed so it's it's the kind of more visible vocal i don't know what word i want to use there part of the community tends to distance themselves from from those uh mm -hmm. less savory aspects <laughs> the the things that are taboos or that are red lines mm -hmm. um, and and as a member of the community, it's kind of a, up to each of us uh, individually also to to recognize when something just shouldn't be done, and mm. if we're safe and comfortable to call it out and not be part of it, mm. not not encourage it, because that that's part of the message of of those games is not trying to to. Uh, like whitewash those things i think that's the right expression mm. uh, but to actually say hey yes these things exist but that doesn't mean they should exist that doesn't mean they should be allowed and tolerated they should mm. be called out and shown to be the problem that they are mm. whether it's something like subtle racism mm. subtle homophobia or or, or the more mm. uh, overt uh, forms of 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 those things they they should be called out and and not tolerated correct yeah when we see um games as art um what do you think what impact life is strange had on the the gamers community hmm <laughs> In some ways, Life is Strange builds upon games that came before, like the Telltale series, The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. That that narrative style, that this action will have consequences, messaging. Uh, you can find those those roots in in previous games, uh, but it's it's the topics, it's the situations, uh, it's the fact that. The Life of Life is Strange series does not uh, avoid hard topics like teen suicide. It does not. Uh, it does not try to present them at these topics uh, in a way to appeal to the masses. It, it presents them as they are, mm. and also doesn't try to try to um, demonize some of them. That those aspects of, of life is strange uh, are kind of that that more art aspect that you mentioned, and will and do have a, an effect on on games uh, and the people that play them, the gamers. And and sometimes we we see that Life is Strange Two certainly drew the a, a lot of people that didn't want to play the game. They were very vocal against it because they found it too political. Mm -hmm. Because it was focused on one of the, one of its topics was the racism, mm. um, but racism that's a part of life for so many people. Yeah, right. Mm. And so the impact I see Life is Strange having is, you know, bringing these topics up as, hey, this is something we should talk about, mm. and one way we can have that discussion is through video games. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right.
think it's it's a good way to to show it then and yeah maybe maybe it's also a way um to get people involved not via as you said mm -hmm. it's not via a political discussion or i think video games may be a subtle way to to yeah experience other um other lifestyle whatever it is mm -hmm. and um yeah that's uh also then um a way uh, also what what i um found interesting is I, I don't play very much i have to admit i but i mm -hmm. played uh, tell me why and i think oh, yes. maybe it's only only on the surface but you can or you 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 have uh, but only slightly um in our view into trans people and what they experience maybe it's only only a, a glimpse of it but um it's totally great that they sh uh, that there is something like that that you can yeah even if you don't know maybe you don't you do you know a person a trans person but if you don't know so there's a way to experience that and and uh yeah so that you mm -hmm. don't have maybe you see okay uh you can uh, lower your fears or maybe uh, have um yeah yeah it can be yeah it can be very difficult to like fully appreciate what life is like for for a per person that comes from an, uh, a a a minority community mm. or or a person that has has gone through some traumatic events video games uh, especially ones like like life is strange where you're taking on mm. that role of, of one of those characters is, is one way to help us have that experience mm -hmm. or or see that experience uh, and, and feel it and, and be part of it and can really help us develop and, and improve uh, our compassion and, and empathy for for other people mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, we also talked about a little bit about Life is Strange True Colors, the game that will come out in September. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what are your expectations and what you are looking forward in Life is Strange True Colors? Ah, my, I'm... I'm definitely looking forward to playing True Colors. I'm excited about it, excited about the main character, the setting. I have watched one trailer, and that is it. I have avoided all other media about it. That's my okay. That's my approach to games uh, and and lots of other things like like movies. I, I try not to learn a lot about mm. the the game or movie or whatever before I. I experience it. Uh, it's just a way for me to approach it with as as least bias as possible, aside from my own biases. Uh, and I, I find it gives me a much better... <laughs> I, I enjoy it a lot more. Uh, so I am excited about True Colors, but to be honest, I, I purposely don't know a lot about it because I, I want to be surprised and I want to uh, just really really experience it but I can't wait for it to come out <laughs> it can't come out soon enough although I, I only want it to come out when it's when it's done and ready <laughs> yeah cool so and are you also looking uh, forward for the remastered version of Life is Strange and uh, Before the Storm or yes uh, I'm I'm looking forward to. I, I think I read that the lip syncing problem on the first game is fixed. I think I read that. So if I'm wrong, I apologize. But uh, mm -hmm. so there's some technical parts about the game that I'm that uh, mm -hmm. should be improved or fixed that I that I am looking forward to. <laughs> It'd be awesome if they also uh, like if the remaster version of BTS also <laughs> had an extra episode or two, but. You know, there's only so much I can uh, actually <laughs> wish w would happen. A um, little, a uh, little anxious around the visuals. Like, how will 
the character appearance be? How will they? How will Max and Chloe and Joyce and mm-hmm. and Daniel uh, and Kate, etc. Are they retaining the the art style from the original game and just like softening parts of their appearance, or are they like completely different? I, I'm a little nervous and, and anxious about that. Funny thing is, I'm also a little bit ambivalent about it uh, because, as you said, um, maybe that I think there's a picture in my head from 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 Max and Chloe, and we are used to this. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, as you said, art style from from the original game. And if this is changed, I don't know if this will match again. So if if there's a, I didn't say, mm-hmm. who is this? This is not Max for me. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But may- maybe it's more, of, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm a lot of um, uh, more an audio person. So I did the, but because the, the, mm-hmm. The voices uh, of of um, Hannah Tell and and Ash, uh, Ashley Birch are, are absolutely fantastic. So they also for me uh, Max and Chloe. So yeah. uh, maybe that this will help, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I uh, like for True Colors. I've avoided trailers and and other things as much as possible around the the remastered version. I, I do hope they they change the hair so it looks less <laughs> like a helmet. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't wait for those to come out too. Concerning Life is Strange, or maybe even aside from that, what are your future plans and projects? As I mentioned I, near the beginning, I, I've got a, around 12 or more story ideas my backlog i've got two or three of them actually in progress which means i've written mm-hmm. at least three chapters my favorite one right now is the uh, mm-hmm. chloe as a, a witch hunter uh there's another story w- one of those stories in my backlog i've been debating whether i want to uh, it's it is an alternate universe and i'm debating whether i want to write it uh with the characters we know and love or whether i want to write it as a completely original work Mm. so are there any other topics you want to focus on in the future i keep telling myself i'm going to write stories without angst oh ha and (laughs) okay (laughs) More more than a more than a one shot. Like write a long story that doesn't have any angst in it, and uh, <laughs> my stories keep uh, having angst. So that's still one thing I'm striving to do is, is write a story that's angst free. I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we are reaching the end of the episode, and is there anything you want to say to the community or give advice for potential fans or writers or anything you want to share? Oh, wide and wide open question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so first I'll say hello, everyone. And... It's been great to have this conversation uh, nice. with you, with you, Martin, and uh, just have really enjoyed being in the community or being in the community. Excuse me, <laughs> I am not the community. Uh, and maybe a, a reminder of what what these games can help us see, help us learn, uh, which is to be accepting and, and tolerant and uh, and show compassion and, and empathy uh, and that there are people in the mm. community that will listen that are there to to hear what you have to say will do so in a way that that uh, mm-hmm. with without judgment um, so all of us you know we, we go through we never know what the other person is uh, is really what their life is really like, or excuse me, what their life is really like. Mm-hmm. And you know, there there are people out there that will listen and 
can can really be that space where you can just express yourself uh, and and open up and and share mm. who you are and and what some of the what's what life is like for you. Yeah, a lot of great people in the community that uh, really help each other. That's that's right. Yeah, that's also one of the things I like. Or, uh, about the community or the the fandom, yeah, mm. yeah, wonderful mm -hmm. closing words. Um, so I think I will link um, some of your um, your work, and um, I think your um, art can be found on Ao3, I think, on a heap of our own. Correct. And are there any other places? That's where I publish all my stories. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, where my handle is Eshelat. I'm most frequently, though, on Discord, uh, where where my my username on Discord is is Eshelat. So, who wants to message me? You can reach me on either Twitter or Discord. Though I'm more apt to uh, reply on on Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Then thanks, Eshi, for being my interview partner. You're welcome. And giving insight into the fandom and your view of it. And have a good day. You too. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. See you. This episode will come to an end now. The next time I will interview Tobia about her wonderful drawings of Sean and Daniel and other characters of Life is Strange 2 and her story of getting into the community. You probably know her already, maybe from the great pick she made for Nicefield's interview in episode 5. You can send in your questions you have via email or Twitter to me. Of course, you can also send me wishes for future interviews and topics. All my contacts are in the link tree Life After Bay, which I'll link in the show notes. The next episode is planned for the last Sunday of August. Thanks for listening to my podcast and spread the word. See you soon in and around Acadia Bay. Yours truly, Martin.